Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to make a custom shadow box for your gaming collectibles. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is this shadow box I made to hold my drift memorabilia from the game Fortnite. Now, some of you may remember that in an earlier project, I made this drift mask. It was designed in Adobe Illustrator, and I had that drawing. So I decided to use that drawing and send it away to have it printed on needlepoint canvas like this. Now, this is Ragnarok. It's another mask I made, but this is what it looks like before you stitch it. Now, my thinking was I was going to turn these two into pillows. But I should have done the math in advance, because if I had, I would have realized there were over 63,000 stitches in one of these. So I decided to do something more special than a pillow. So that's where the idea for this came from. I had some other things I wanted to include with it. I have a, a keychain. I have the Season 5 pin that has drift on it. And I have a Funko Pop. So I started with those four items, and I designed the shadow box around it in Adobe Illustrator. I put an engraving design on it that's based on the Tory gate symbol that's on the back of Drift's coat. So I then used that drawing to engrave and cut the pieces on a laser cutter and assembled them. So I'm going to talk to you about how to do that because, you know, I've done it for Drift memorabilia, but you can use it to showcase uh, legacy game artifacts or anything else that you want to treat in a very special way. The first thing I do is take pictures of each of the items I want to include, and I clean them up in Photoshop and get them ready to bring into my drawing. Now in the drawings you're going to see, the red lines are cut lines on the laser cutter, the blue lines are engraving lines, and the green lines are for my reference only, and don't tell the laser cutter to do anything. I pull my pictures into Illustrator and I size them using the grid in Illustrator to the actual size of the items and then I lay them out in an order that I think looks nice. I'm going to use this then to draw around it to create my actual drawing. Now the front is a half inch bigger all the way around than the sides. The box in the back are these four sides here and I actually draw them in right on the drawing. And then I take one of the sides and I copy it and paste it into a new layer of the drawing where I'm going to draw the actual side. I use a quarter inch grid because I have quarter inch plywood and other than that I do very little measuring in my design process. It's almost entirely visual. I know I want a four inch deep box and I have to put tabs that are going to stick through the front and I have this kind of tab and groove system that I put in the overlapping corners. I'll put a link to a video that shows in real detail how I use the pathfinder functions to add these tabs and grooves. But once I decide where they are, I add them to the side and then I copy and paste that back into the front drawing. And this then shows me where to do these cutaways for the tabs to show through. No measuring, it's all done visually. I find this method to be not only easier but much more accurate and I usually can cut things the first time without a mistake. I use the same approach for the small boxes, so this little one here for the keychain. I first do a draw on the sides. I make sure I have an overlap in the corner because those teeth have to fit together. Then I copy and paste that side into a new layer. I'm making this box only three inches deep. Once I see where I want to put the tab, I put that on the side. I bring it back into the front drawing and I turn that rectangle red and now it's a cutaway for the tab. The pin just needs a pinhole for the back, the rest is going to be engraving. And this box is going to run right up against the outside box, so it only needs three sides. I'm making this box three and a half inches deep because that's what I need to hold my Funko Pop. The last box will hold the needle point and it's so large it uses three of the actual box sides and only needs a fourth side created specially for it. So I go and I make another copy of the short side of the box, but I take the tabs off the top so it fits under the front. Then I mark those green side references to see where I want to put the slots to put that fourth side in. Each of these internal boxes need backs, and I can use the pieces that I cut out of the front 
for these two small ones and just glue them in the back. But for the needlepoint box to make it shallower, I need to cut a special piece and put tabs on the side. And to make this box only three inches deep, I'll put slots in one inch up from the back on two sides of the needlepoint box. I create a hanger that will fit in the space behind the needlepoint box. It's four layers of wood glued together with an angled hole in it. For the engraving, I did an image trace of a black and white version of the gate symbol. I flipped a copy over and I saw that they nested nicely together and then I could just group those into borders that I would then copy and paste and lay out in a format that I thought looked nice on the front. The last step is to lay out all the pieces on actual cut sheets and I fit everything onto three two foot by two foot boards. I always have the laser cutter do the engraving first because then the pieces aren't cut and moving around and then the last step is the cuts which actually take longer than all that engraving. I assemble my small parts first and clamp them and set them aside to dry. So I do the hanger and then I do the small box which has four sides and I just prop it up with these four inch granite blocks I like to use when I'm doing assembly. On the three sided box I actually use the back to make sure everything is square as it dries. I do the needlepoint part of the main box first and uh, my granite blocks aren't enough for this. I have to actually use long clamps to hold this together as it dries. And then when it is, I can add the fourth and final side and clamp that. Putting the top on is when you really appreciate the precision of laser cutting because it drops right on perfectly. I need a hanger for my keychain, so I use my needle nose pliers and some wire to make one. I drill a hole in the top center of the small box and put the wire through. I glue these small boxes in from the back. I just flip the main box over and insert them. I clamp the Funko box to make sure it's tight against the fourth side. I finish everything with several coats of wipe on poly. I always clean my laser edges uh, before I start assembly, but this not only finishes things, it seals those edges as well. I block my needle point by pinning it square and then hitting it with a steam iron to keep it that way. I find the center of each side of the board and the center, mark the center of the needle point, and then start stapling. And you staple from the center out, constantly checking the front to make sure it looks right. Then you have to finish the corners by cutting away some of the excess material, and this is what it looks like when it's done. I wanted the needle point elevated from the back, so I used some leftover parts from another project, and I experimented to see how much elevation I wanted. I settled on an inch, and then I had to glue those blocks together and set them aside to dry. I want the needle point to be removable, so I'm going to use heavy duty Velcro with adhesive backs, and I cut this paper jig to help me position, because once again, I don't like to measure things. I like to do things visually. I glue the blocks to the back of the needle point and not to the inside of the box. I put everything inside to check for the center of gravity to see the best place to put the hanger. And here it is with that angled opening so it stays on the nail. I wanted to leave my box open, but you could also cover this with clear acrylic if you wanted to protect its contents. I have lots of other projects I'm working on for gaming and gamers, so if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.